Welcome to part number three of VCM scanner. So basically what I'm doing is, is I'm breaking this massive scanner of all of this information and all of the things it can do into different parts to make it easier for you to understand. I can probably shove in more and better information in a shorter amount of time, which is going to help you guys out at the end of the day. Anyway, in part number one, we actually talked about channels over here on our left hand side, uh, basically to give you guys an idea as how to set everything up, how to add stuff, how to move it around uh, and etc and etc. So for example, if we look at this category over here, all of this, this has like been related to your turbo, your wastegate duty cycle, desired boost, your boost pressure, exhaust gas temperature, and also as you're driving your car, it gets hotter, uh, the engine oil temp, and all of those kind of things. If we go further down, this is our lambda. This is basically our fuel area of our short-term, long-term fuels, and our low-pressure fuel pump, and fuel rail pressure, and all that. I see it keeps on going bright and dark again. Going to our next one, as you guys can see, it has to do with our timing and then this one has to do with our misfires and our cam angle. So basically, I showed you guys how to do it and move it all around and basically what I did. Part number two, we talked about charts versus time. This is basically to set up everything over here uh, on how to do it, how to move the limits, the parameters and how to add things and the right sensors and all of that. So for part number three, we're going to talk about gauges. So if we actually just move this down over here move this one to the right we can actually see the gauges a little bit better now okay so at first it depends on how much experience you have okay this might look intimidating to a few people but it's actually not so intimidating it's actually pretty darn easy i mean if you do look here it says total kr what the heck is that advanced advanced what tps what the heck is TPA? So that's why I said, depends on your uh, your experience, this might actually be uh, just a look over or you might actually be a little bit intimidated. So total KR is total knock retard. Advanced is spark advanced. TPS is throttle position sensor. So you might be shocked like, dude, how do you know all of these things? These things, it, it's the basics. You learn it really off the start. Remember, uh, some people are probably laughing at me now. Like, how do you not know it? <laughs> you do learn it over time. So let me quickly, uh, I will get to that part now to make it very easy for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're quickly going to focus on our RPMs. Uh, my car shifts at 7,000 RPMs. And as you guys can see, it also goes to 7,000 RPMs. Perfect. But there's something I'm not happy about. So let me quickly load a log. This is a log that I've actually done. So I want you to look at the RPMs as I'm basically going to move it, move it, move it. Uh, you're at 5,000 RPMs is entering the yellowish kind of border and then or parameter or limit. And once I go to 6,000, it turns red. Like as I move over 6,000, it turns red. That's basically because there's a limit set. A lot of people will use these gauges differently. For example, myself, I'll use this as an alarm, you know. So basically, once uh, I drive and I've got my laptop next to me, a lot of people actually use tablets or phones. I don't know how the hell they do that. I'll actually look into it because it's actually very, very cool. They'll put it like next to the car and as they're accelerating, in the in the peripheral they'll look at it and as soon as something pops up red they'll be like okay let off the throttle something's out of parameter because you said everything you literally set everything out there okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix the parameters on this um what do you call it on this gauge over here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on it we're gonna go to gauge layout so here is all these massive words this is basically all the contents in these gauges uh so just to show you guys where is that total kr so here it is if i'm gonna click on it it's labeled called this total kr and there it is total knock retard here goes the airplane yeah i think it's an airplane anyway so then we look click on advance over here spark advance when you click on tps throttle position sensor so it just it's a bit easier for people to understand especially if they don't know what it is if you go here to o2 so there's oxygen sensor uh bank one all right, so anyway, we're going to talk about the RPM. So you right over here, this is the label. This is what it's called. Type is our ellipse. So this is basically ellipse is the analog, the round analog, which RPMs already is. And bar vertical is basically these bars here at the bottom. When we go over here to the parameters, this is the parameter you actually put in. So the engine speed parameter, and this is the unit. So it's under units, uh, revol it's under units. It's just under revolutions per minute RPM. And then when you look at decimals, this is basically saying if you did 100 
or let's say a thousand rpms and thousand rpms 0 0.5069 depends on how many decimals you will have then going to the filter we don't actually really adjust these kind of things uh one thing we do adjust is the limits so this is basically how high the rpm should be like 7000 rpms is when i basically shift so you can actually make like 8000 rpms if you want to um which is actually not a bad idea uh, we can make it 8000 rpms there goes another airplane goodness or a helicopter anyway so there is 7000 rpms so what i want you guys to really focus on is basically the ranges here at the bottom especially that's what i'm going to be focusing on now um so also we've got a minimum so instead of like putting zero as a minimum you can be like 4000 as a minimum so it only like basically reads from 4000 to 7000 rpms if it makes any sense um so for the ranges if you guys do look here we start at 5,000 and we end at 6,000. So automatically when we look at this graph, we can see oh, from 5,000 to 6,000 RPMs, it's a bit yellowish, okay? And then when you look there, you see it's level two, okay? So that probably means the yellow is level two, right? When you go further on, you see 6,000 to 7,000 is level three. So that means level three is like the border. That's when everything pops up. So you can see there from 6,000 to 7,000 is red. My car shifts at uh, 7,000 RPM. So this won't really, it, it just won't be there. You know, like uh, I'll forever be in the red. Like I told you guys, this is going to be in my peripheral. I'm going to try my best to get in my peripheral. So if I see something pops up red, I know that, well, something is a problem. So basically what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to remove these values. Okay. Oh yeah. Just to let you guys know, you guys see level two and level three. You can put something down such as, let's say a thousand RPMs to 2000 RPMs, just for argument's sake, we can make it one. So as you guys can see, that means it's green. So you can basically from zero to 5,000 or 6,000, whatever you want, you can make it green. It's just too much. It's just too much for me. So I'll just leave it out. So what we are going to do though is, um, we're going to turn it back to yellow. And we're going to say from 6,500 RPMs to 7,100 RPMs uh, must be yellow. So now you guys are probably asking, why the heck are you going to do it till 7,100 because your car shifts at 7,000? Basically what happens is this is automatic. Sometimes when it shifts is at 6949 or whatever. And sometimes when it shifts again is 70001. So if I put my limits on 7000 it means while I'm driving and the car is auto shifting and it just surpass the RPMs a little bit, it means it's going to pop up red. So that means on shift every time if I put it at 7000 RPMs and it just goes over 7000 RPMs basically a little bit, it's going to pop up red. Pop up red, pop up red. So I, I'm trying to like avoid that. So even going 7,100 is a little bad. I mean, we can put 050 if we really want. Uh, this this is gonna take practice. The more you go out, the more you try, the more you learn, the more you see, okay, I can move it, I can move it, I can move it until you've got it at that sweet spot, you know? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it for now at 7,100 RPM. So then I know for a fact that when I shift, it's not supposed to turn red then that will be level two. As you guys can see, there it is. It's passing 7,000 a little bit. And what I will do is from 7,100 till 7,200, we'll basically go red. So as you guys see there, we can go red. I can actually like put the RPMs at 8,000. So it just looks a little bit better. Uh, but for me, this is, this is fine. It's all personal preference at the end of the day. So there we go. We basically, there we changed the, the ranges where it should pop up red and all that. So as you guys saw previously, it did went red. I think I showed you guys. So where it did go red in a uh, year at 6,000 RPMs, as you guys can see, I went further, 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 further. And right here when I shifted at 6,930, uh, it's basically still didn't turn red, which is a good thing. Okay, so the next thing we're going to work on is the ECT. Sounds very freaking difficult. Engine coolant temperature. There we go. Engine coolant temperature. There's the sensor. Ellipse, once again, is a round graph. Going to our units, uh, I work in degrees Celsius, okay? So then this is the amount of decimals, our filters. Uh, so this is basically our major ticks. So as you guys do count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So by changing this, it will change the amount of uh, units it will display, uh, display on the big screen and how many obviously between them like is all of them gonna be a certain amount you guys will gonna have to play a bit around that so let's say for example we make this five as you can see there's five difference between all of them but it's supposed to go to 250 but it just bombed out at 50 so for now it said just leave that factor at one 
the minor ticks is all these little ticks in between so basically it says every tick is worth five so if you go to 50 so it's 55 yeah, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. All right, and then these are obviously our uh, our limit. So because it was Fahrenheit is in degrees Celsius, our max will be 120. And then because it's degrees Celsius, I would like to put in like 10 or let's quickly put in zero. Perfect, zero is fine. As you guys can see, it just makes the graph easier to read. So basically I can see whenever I started my car up, like where it kind of was, it's just, Cool, it's nice to see because we can do it. <laughs> so then we're gonna go to our ranges. So obviously these ranges are no more valid. Um, we're gonna change it. So this, I know my car, and this is a good thing, you should know your car. I know that my car is always at 90 degrees uh, temperature at optimum. So what we're gonna do is, as soon as we reach 90 to 100, we can still, we, we give it some kind of limits, depends how many back-to-back -back runs you do and all of, all of those kind of things. We're going to put it at 100. So it's going to have a level 2, that yellow kind of thing, uh, from 90 to 100. And then for the red, we're going to move it from 100 to 120. So basically going to the end. So if we do quickly look at this chart over here, so 90 to 100, it's yellow. And from 100 to 120, because my gauge actually shows to 130, 120. We don't even want to pass that. will be red. So let's quickly go and open a graph. Um, first log. So as, you, as we're pushing the car, you guys can basically see over here, our engine coolant stayed the same. Oh, it went from, wait for it. There's 99. If we go as RPMs, we went to a hundred degrees Celsius, pushed it there. We actually went like a little bit over a hundred. It's just when you go maybe into decimals, it was 99.6 and then it was still fine, even though it read as a hundred. And once you got to like a hundred point one, it turns red. So basically what happens is when I'm driving and I see, oh, it's popping red and I know, okay, something is wrong. Okay. And then even if we go over here. I'm probably not, this was like the first time I ever sorted this thing out. I don't even think I'm going to get engine cooling temperature here. It should be this somewhere. Um, but I, yeah, I'm not going to go and look for it now. So anyway, when anything, whenever something pops up red, you should know that there is a problem. So then you're going to go and work on your, uh, what do you call it, on your intake air temps and all of those kind of things. This video is turning out a little bit longer than I was hoping for, but we're quickly going to leave the gauges as it is there. We're going to look at these graphs here at the bottom. So for example, uh, my injector uh, bank one and my O2 sensor bank one, we're never going to use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click gauges. We're going to go to injector over here. We're going to change it. We're going to click on this. We're going to say spark retard. There we go. So we're going to make it cylinder number one and we're going to rename it here to something we are going to notice. I'm just going to say cylinder number one. Uh, what is our limits? We should never hopefully see more than uh, minus 10 as an example. Okay, so then what I'll do is from minus five to minus, well, we can, we, we don't even actually have to put that in. I'll just say minus five. I, don't, I wanted to put a yellow border in, but we don't have to. So I'll say from minus five to minus 10 <clears throat> will be zone three. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this one over here. We're gonna say, we actually first gotta change the name. Oh, sorry, the parameter, spark retard. So I'm just quickly going to burn through this. Okay, so for the while, last one, cylinder four. All right, so let's quickly close it up. So as you guys can see, it's words over words. All you do is you just take the graph, you just move it a little bit, boom, and it is fine now. So this is basically going to be our uh, knock per each line. As you guys can see, there is a little bit of red in there. Let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger. There is some red. So once it obviously goes to that red, it's supposed to turn red. Uh, so let's quickly go over here. But for some reason, it's like these bar charts, they don't change red. Uh, it goes into the red, but the graph itself doesn't change red. Uh, so if I quickly push it, we're pushing the car. As you guys can see there, we have some knock on cylinder number three. Going further. Now we've got some knock on cylinder number one. As we go further, knock on cylinder number four. 
and it just disappeared as we got off throttle okay so that is how you can set these up so let's say basically there's something you want to do uh, for example I don't want this total knock retard I rather want to see all of these things individually what I'll do is I'll go here to total knock retard if you want to add a gauge you can add it here if you want to remove a gauge you can remove it here if you want to clone a gauge you can click over here so we want to remove total KR so now, because of my OCD, can you guys see this is not right? I, I don't like it like this. Everything should be moved. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, oopsie, we're going to quickly go back to gauges and layouts. We're going to go to our advance over here. And right over here, you guys can see how far should move to the left, to the top, to the width, to the height. So from the left, we can say 4. 4%, 4 we go to TPS. TPS, we are going to say... Let's make it 6% between all of them. So we're going to make it 10. That's too close. So 4 to 16 is too far. 12. Too close. 14. Okay, let's try 14. So that is 4. It was how much percent was it? It was 4 to 14 is 10%. So it means basically everyone we go up with, we're going to add 10%. 24, 34, uh, 44. 54 uh, going on 64 64 74 oh that's actually perfect 84 and 94 all right so if i go ahead and close this you guys see it looks so much better now it's a little bit far to the right so what i'll actually do is because i still want to see all the info on this side so i'll actually just move it up a little bit until everything squeeze in so there we go that is basically how you adjust it also once again you can right click here and go to gauges and uh you can just click add a gauge and then uh where is it there add a round analog gauge or add a vertical gauge so anyway there we go guys this was a big topic you're gonna go now and fine tune everything like you want in a parameters that you think will be the best for your car there is no right there is no wrong there's you should not do certain things <laughs> like you should not make your red alarm pop up for your engine cooling temp at 150 if you well well knowingly when your car is always at 120 oh sorry it's always at 90 going to 100 is a little bit overboard and where you usually are now you put your limit at 120 personal preferences at the end of the day but anyway guys i'm gonna i'm gonna drop this video right over here it is super long i'm so super sorry i'm so thirsty right now but i do hope i helped you guys out super much with this video so the next thing we're gonna talk about for part number four will be this freaking graph tables over here what the hell is going on don't worry we'll actually work a little bit through it but anyway guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see all of you legends in my next video but for now peace out